Are we play are we playing?
Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Mary's Church, Eaton Soak, and thank you for your patience. Apologies, we had connection issues here. We couldn't get it onto Facebook. If you're watching this on YouTube later, you know, hopefully everything is all right. But thank you for joining us this morning. We are all right now. It's just the joys of technology. Thank you to all those who gather here, the small team, to make it so. We're glad we could sort it all out. How's your week been? The sunshine is out here in the UK more, and it's really, you feeling the warmth of the sun. It's lovely to, in a sense, see the emerging spring into summer. Few notices before we get underway. Uh, reminder, do please join us for coffee after the service by Zoom. That's still happening. We really encourage you to come and join us so you can connect with people and enjoy that time together. The kitchen update, we're just over 12,000 now. Last week we were just under 12,000. This week we're just over 12,000. So do keep those gifts coming uh, to help resource that work. On a sadder note, we know that life is full of ups and downs. And we know that when uh, friends of ours and relatives pass away, we grieve. And tomorrow, we have the funeral of Betty Woodall, a woman in her mid-90s who gave so much to this church. And so her funeral is tomorrow, Monday the 26th. If you need the, uh, the live stream link, please do contact me today so I can send that to you. But we'll be remembering Betty before God and giving thanks for her life with her family and friends. Well, friends, I think that's enough Life 24-7 from me this morning. We're going to now have two songs that actually remind us of who God is. The first is the Tanin version of The Lord's My Shepherd, a reminder that throughout all seasons of life, through good, through challenging, the Lord is always with us. And then we're reminded of how Jesus stepped down into human history to be our Savior and Lord through light of the world. Thank you, musicians.
Lord, we thank you this morning that we come to you, the light of the world, that you stepped down into our darkness and that you came and you died and you rose again and you have opened our eyes to see you, the Lord who is the risen King. So we come this morning to offer you our worship and our praise because you are Lord, you are great and you are God and we worship you our risen King. Amen. And so we watch a video that is entitled, He is the Risen King. truly is our risen King who entered our world. And we're going to recognize that this morning in the words of our creed. So would you please join with me in the words in yellow. Let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And as we have affirmed that we can trust in our Lord who came and rose and is living on high, we can bring to him our intercessions and this morning our intercessions have been written for us by, my, by Margaret Ligo. Thank you so much for these, Margaret. I will be reading them, but we are so grateful for the time and the thought that you have given to these. So let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. We pray for your church in this country and around the world. Support and strengthen your ministers as they lead churches back towards services for larger congregations. Protect those ministers working in areas of danger and encourage those who battle indifference. Be with Tim Julie, and all our leaders as they continue to offer online services. Strengthen your whole church in the service of Christ, so that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for all doctors, nurses, paramedics and hospital workers as the pressure on the NHS remains relentless. 
support the medical staff as they make difficult decisions about treatments and endeavour to tackle the long waiting lists. We thank you, Lord, for their skills and perseverance. We praise you for the ingenuity and hard work of the scientific community who have produced vaccines so speedily, giving us the hope that long, normal life may resume. We thank you for the many acts of kindness and generosity shown by friends and strangers during the long months of isolation. Help us to be generous too, with our time, our patience and our support for those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world as governments everywhere continue to struggle with managing the pandemic. This morning we remember India particularly, as this at this time, as their hospitals are overwhelmed with COVID patients. They struggle to meet the need for oxygen. We pray for them, Lord. Give wisdom to leaders as they endeavour to balance the need for protecting the vulnerable with the need for economic stimulus. Guide richer countries to share stocks of vaccines so that everyone may benefit. We pray for those living under repressive regimes, and particularly we remember the people of Myanmar, where many are caught up in the violent struggle for power. O oh Lord, we pray now for our own country and for those elected to positions in national and local government. May they represent us honestly and with integrity. We ask for help for the many people facing unemployment, debt and homelessness. We pray that they will be supported until the economy revives. Inspire us, O oh Lord, to look beyond the narrow confines of our own lives and to provide assistance where we can. We thank you, Lord, for the work of the food banks, which offer a lifeline to those in despair. Bless and protect Elizabeth, our Queen, as she returns to her public duties. We thank you, God, for her dedicated life of service and her example of faith. Give wisdom to all in authority and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honour one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh Lord, for all children and young people whose lives have been changed dramatically over the last year. Be with them, Lord, as they continue to adjust to life in school. We pray too for students whose university education is still largely online. We pray for the teachers too, as they struggle to maintain all that they need to do in this difficult time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh Lord, for those who are sick. Please, Lord Jesus, put your loving arms around those who are in pain, lonely or afraid. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit, remembering particularly those from our own families, friendship groups, and those from our widening church community. Comfort, O oh Lord, those who mourn. Today we thank God for the life of Mrs. Betty Woodall and pray for comfort for her family. We give thanks in a moment of quiet for the lives of our own family members and friends who died in the faith of Christ. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and all people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And so together we will say the words of the special prayer for today, which are found on the screens. Risen Christ, faithful shepherd of your Father's sheep, Teach us to hear your voice and to follow your command, that all your people may be gathered into one flock, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, 
your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So before Tim comes and shares God's words to us, let's have our Bible reading from Psalm 30, brought to us by David Brattle. Thank you, David. Psalm 30. I will exalt you, Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. Lord my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spared me from going down to the pit. Sing the praises of the Lord, you his faithful people. Praise his holy name, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favour lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. When I felt secure, I said, I shall never be shaken. Lord, when you favoured me, you made my royal mountain stand firm. But when you hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, Lord, I called. To the Lord, I cried for mercy. What is gained if I am silenced, if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? Hear, Lord, and be merciful to me. Lord, be my help. Mm -hmm. You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy that my heart may sing your praises and not be silent. Lord my God, I will praise you forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you for joining us, everyone, today. And today, in a sense, is the beginning of a new three-part series that I'll talk more about shortly. But you may have noticed that actually also over these three weeks, we're using various psalms. Psalm 30 has been our reading today. Earlier we sang the 23rd Psalm and we saw also that reflected in our special prayer for the day. But also earlier still, after our musical countdown, we actually had Psalm 95. The Psalm is a wonderful book of so many, in a sense, encouragements, especially when things are going well, but also when things are a challenge. And so my prayer is that you would grow deeper into the Psalms with us this week and over the next couple of weeks. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for your amazing word. We thank you for all that it encourages us and strengthens us. Lord, as we focus now on Psalm 30, may we know its truth. And may that truth enrich all our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, in my annual address back in March, and if you want to read that, it's available on our website, eatandsoken.org, under Inspiring Resources. You'll see my annual address there. I reflected on the fact that all our lives have been turned upside down over the past 14 months due to COVID. Sadly, we know that whilst... Uh, the UK is doing very well. There are other parts of the world that are really struggling. We heard in our intercessions, please keep praying for places like India and others where things are just so desperate. Please do pray for them because God responds to our prayers. But within my annual address, uh, 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 annual address when I reflected on the part, fact that our lives have been turned upside down, I also reflected on the truth that true restoration is only found in God. And if we want to be truly restored, then we need to allow his healing touch to touch each of our lives. Wherever we are, all of us need to recover well. For those still going through the pandemic and other parts of the world where it is out of control, friends, be assured that God walks with you and we are praying for you. But we need to make sure that all of us, when we come out the other side, recover well, emotionally, physically, and spiritually speaking. 
Because a good recovery is essential to living life as God has designed life to be lived. Each of us needs to allow God time to touch our lives by the power of his spirit. Friends, we're going to be reflecting on how God has left his spirit to work in and amongst us in a few weeks' time on Pentecost. But it's true, God is at work today and he is at work in all our lives and he can work in your life too. As such, for those more local here to eat and soak in, one resource at St. Mary's will be offering its community to help with this process of recovery in a few weeks' time is actually the use of spaces, or you might like to think of them as zones or stations, that will be set up throughout the church building, whilst each space will focus on a different theme of our well-being to help aid our recovery, All the spaces have three things in common. They're built on three key things. And thank you, by the way, to CPAS for supplying this great model. The first thing is remembering. We need to remember what has happened. This is about acknowledging what has happened and not ignoring it. Friends, if we just push it to one side as if it didn't happen, we will store up for us problems in time to come. So we need to remember what has happened. The second thing we need to do is to reflect. We need to reflect on how the pandemic has impacted our lives, both the good things that have come out of it, but also the more challenging things. As such, this is an uh, an opportunity to process one's experiences, both positive and negative. So we need to reflect. That's the second thing. The third thing we need to do uh, is to make sure we recover. And this is about helping people to reconnect with each other. Are you longing for those conversations with each other when you can sit down over a cup of coffee or a good meal and share life together? So we need to reconnect with each other. But we also need to make sure we reconnect with God and also the different things that surround our lives that will help restore us. So friends, we need to remember, we need to reflect, we need to recover. And each of the spaces we're going to be creating here in church, available in a few weeks' time, share this in common. They have all those three things running through them. Our spaces will contain a mixture of guided and self-guided spaces. Also, for those that would like to complete a well-being course that you can sign up for with a small group of people, a chance to engage with each other, we'll be running that too. More information about that in a few weeks' time. But friends, I believe that these are the most important things we need to do. Because if we don't remember, if we don't reflect and recover well, we will store up problems for us further down the line. As such, all these spaces are an important part of St. Mary's roadmap out of the present pandemic. So we do commend that to you and make sure that you actually, uh, you know, share this journey with us, sharing all that together. But to prepare us to engage with these spaces today and over the next two Sundays, we're going to be exploring these three themes of remembering, reflecting and recovering It is my prayer that these will be of use to all of us as we emerge into a brave new world. Today, in our remaining time, we're going to be thinking about the first of these things, remembering. So, thinking about remembering, how good are you at remembering things? Because we all remember in different ways. We remember how old we are according to the number of birthdays we've had. So let me ask, how many birthdays have you had? Perhaps you would rather forget if the number is getting bigger and bigger, which it is for all of us. We remember how long we've been in a job or how long we may have engaged in a hobby or interest by when we began it. When shopping, and we all shop in different ways, whether it's for groceries or whether it's uh, for clothes or other entertainment items or anything in life, we usually remember what we like as this influences what we buy. I think it's fair to say that if you go out shopping, you do have an idea. You do remember, I like this, I don't like that. That is actually important. So remembering is part of our daily lives. 
Our reading today, though, from Psalm 30, reminds us of the unpredictable nature of life and the uncertainties that surround our daily living. I encourage you to read Psalm 30 again at home. It's not a long psalm. Read it and be reminded. From finding ourselves in a good place at times to when life can suddenly change and we find our lives being literally shaken, our lives are made up of so many different seasons and experiences. And it's important to remember this. We see this in the 23rd Psalm that we sang earlier. Look at those words. Look for the different seasons of life there. And likewise, when we come to the psalmist's writings in Psalm 30 today, what we notice is the way the different seasons and experience of life match the closeness or distance the psalmist feels with God. For example, when we read the psalmist saying in verses 6 and 7, When I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. Lord, when you favoured me, you made my royal mountain stand firm. These words paint a good season of life. When the psalmist has an amazing awareness, an overwhelming sense of God's divine grace and presence. But the psalm changes because life changes and life can suddenly change in a blink. And in the case of our psalm, we find the psalmist's life being shaken. For example, in verses 7b to 9, where we read, But when you hid your face, O Lord, I was dismayed. To you, Lord, I called. To the Lord, I cried for mercy. What is gained if I am silenced? If I go down to the pit. Friends, these words paint a picture of a most challenging season of life when the psalmist's sense of being held in God's hands has come crashing down around him and he feels so distant from God. The truth is that for all of us, and I think it's fair to say all of us, our lives are full of similar moments when our awareness of God's presence can wax and wane. At times it can be more, at other times it can be less or not at all. But what we need to remember, and this is where remembering comes in and why remembering is so important, what we need to remember though is that our awareness of God's presence isn't the same as the reality of God's presence. Let me say that again. Our awareness of God's presence isn't the same as the reality of God's presence. Because, friends, the truth is that God is always present, whether or not we are aware of him. So whether you're feeling very close to him now or feeling as if he's a million miles, actually God is present. It is at these times, like footprints in the sand, that he's actually carrying you and you can't see him because he is at his closest. As Wilson, one Bible commenter, writes on this, our perceptions are not always the best judge of reality. God is present when we doubt it or when we cannot perceive him. That reality is not changed by our being aware or unaware. Nevertheless, our reaction to our circumstances can be immensely altered by our sense of God's presence or absence. So let me ask you this morning, how are you reacting to the circumstances that surround you at present? What do you need to remember this day to bring peace into your life and to help you recover well? You see, remembering is so much part and parcel of the restoration and healing process. We need to remember God's goodness. For the psalmist, if he didn't look back and remember God's goodness, he would have nothing to base his future life on. He would think that he had fallen so far, he was beyond redeeming or beyond having that circumstance transformed. But the fact is, actually God can transform our darkest nights. Remembering both the circumstances we find ourselves in and God's abiding presence 
which is able to respond to our cries for help and lift us out of the depths of despair is crucial to recovering well. Remembering, we see this in the psalm. In Psalm 30, verses 1 to 3, we read these words. Verse 1, I will exalt you, Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. See, the psalmist recognizes who God is and the fact that he can deliver. What about verse 2? O Lord my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. Again, you hear and see the psalmist crying out and God responding. This is true for us today. And verse 3, you, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spared me from going down to the pet. Do you see again the psalmist thanking God for his deliverance? And so, friends, as we remember both our circumstances and the fact that God is always with us, his abiding presence is always with us, verse 11 of our reading then tells us what this leads to. What does the psalmist say? He says, you turn my wailing into dancing. You remove my sackcloth and clothe me with joy. Friends, we need to remember God's goodness. We need to also remember the good times that we've had in the past and the fact that God will deliver us and lead us through. And so today, Psalm 30 reminds us and encourages us to remember to grant our hope and confidence in God and in God alone. Friends, if we don't place our hope in God, you know, all other hope that we may try and place our things in is actually fruitless. It will disappoint, but God doesn't. The challenge here is to place our hope and confidence in God and in God alone. Even in, and especially in seasons of trial, we need to remember to place our hope and trust in God because he is the one who can sustain us through each day, whatever life brings. He is the one from whom we can draw true strength. We can bring encouragement and comfort in each and every great challenge and difficulty we face. He is the one who promises to turn our wailing into dancing. He is the one who can remove our sackcloth and clothe us with joy. So friends, today, what do you need to remember about God? Do you need to be reminded about who he is? If so, read Psalm 30. And then when you've read that a few times, what about turning back to the 23rd Psalm that we sang earlier? And then in response to that, remembering who God is and what he has done, what about flicking over to Psalm 95 that we began this service with? Friends, all these things point to who God is and remembering who he is. And friends, as we emerge from this pandemic, certainly here in the UK and other places around the world that are struggling, let us make sure we keep our eyes firmly fixed on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, the one in whom we can trust our lives to, both this day and every day. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Tim. And as we come to remember, we come to remember that we can come to our Heavenly Father. We can come to the one who came to die for us and bring to him our lives. And so we have this moment now where we can confess those things that we have done, that we know, we know our sin. We know our wrong. So please join with me in the words in yellow. Like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors, we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. 
And so as we come to remember that we serve and worship a faithful God, our closing hymn this morning is Great is Thy Faithfulness. If you're at home, please do join in at the tops of your voices because only you and God will hear that. You are playing to an audience of one. Great is thy faithfulness. So as we come to the close of our service, let's pray together. Lord, we thank you that you are truly our faithful God. That, Lord, you are the one that we can remember who is with us at good times and in the tough times. We thank you, Lord, for this morning. We thank you for your presence with us. And we ask as we go through this week and as we continue to emerge from lockdown, you will help us to remember your faithfulness, to keep hold of you in the good times and in the tough times. We thank you, Lord, that an awareness of your presence is not the same as the reality of your presence because you are always with us. So go with us now, we pray, into this week. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit will remain with us today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. So thank you for joining us this morning. We have loved having your presence with us. Do join with us again next week at 10 o'clock when we will worship our amazing, faithful God. Thank you.